according to you. All right, um, so I'm talking about TENT. Uh, what we're doing is we <coughs> tokenize very precious assets and make them available to a much larger, uh, larger audience in the world. And I explain you how that use case works and um, what we're doing. So in general, there's a lot of talk about all the assets in the world will be tokenized. Um, and that's probably <coughs> true. And I personally think that is the much bigger use case than currencies. So I believe that cryptocurrencies have their case, but crypto assets will be much bigger um, and utility much smaller. So in that wild universe of all the assets that could be tokenized, we are focusing on a very specific segment, which is the very, very high value precious assets. And what we do, and it's equally important, that's not for everyone. We focus extremely on the next generation, on a very specific type of consumer in the world, which we believe will emerge, uh, or is already in, uh, in existence, especially in emerging markets, who live a very different life, who expect that everything they get today is available and accessible on a mobile phone, obviously, and has raised a lot of expectations. But what they do is they live an asset-like life. And what that means is they do not buy houses or any other heavy um, kind of investments that tie them down for many years. They live a life that they know in two years I may go to New York and work some years and after that I go to Australia to take some years off. So they don't want to get tied by heavy assets. And they keep all options for their lifestyle open. That's very key. That's our target segment who lives such a life. And they do as well have a strong sense about the planet. They care about nature. They care about positive consumption, how it's mm -hmm. called. They want to make a positive impact. And that's the way you actually start to spend money and invest money. And also their trust behavior has moved away from today's central institutions to much more decentralized trust, mainly their own network. Um, they rely on, on any recommendation and any activity they're doing. And this type of uh, generation is extremely dominant in Asia, in the symmetric markets and in Latin America. And these are the markets where we mainly will roll out our product, um, as we see uh, a huge population who is actually living in this different area already will be there. So how we do it, um, on the one side, we do have um, very, very precious investments like uh, lux luxury cars or uh, art pieces, uh, wines and so on. I come to all the examples we have on the platform. <laughs> And what then happens is you need to connect that real world with a more digital world. And unfortunately, the biggest problem today is that the legal environment is not up to this at all. So there's a lot of legal engineering necessary actually to create the linkage between, let's say, the luxury car and tokenize it on the blockchain. It will not work that you go with a token to any authority and say, this token represents my car. They're going to laugh at you. So you need to create actually a sort of due diligence, a specific certificate, which certifies the authenticity, the quality of this product, and a lot of registration. And then the second step is you use, in our case, the blockchain to actually tokenize these. And uh, I'm often asked also the question like before, why you use actually blockchain at all? And there are four key reasons why we believe blockchain is superior in our models and central databases. The first one is that these objects typically have a history of intransparency. A lot of art pieces, you don't know who had it and whether they're original. And from that moment on, once we tokenize it going forward, we're going to have a very transparent registry of all the activities that ever happened with that piece. So at least going forward, we're going to have that uh, transparent, temper-free ledger. The second is that what I'm going to build here is basically a marketplace. I show you that so you can buy and sell your fractional ownerships. And the blockchain is a transaction ledger, so I get it for free. I don't need to build it. So that's just for me smart and have a very robust transaction environment. The third one, which is um, very important in my use case as well, is that I have a lot of partners working with me on that. Um, so I have insurance partners, I do have valuation partners, I do have service partners, maintenance partners. And 
instead of changing data or exchanging data like in the current world through APIs where you never have a data sync, with blockchain you can achieve that everybody works on the same data status mm -hmm. all the time and that's hugely efficient. And I think that's probably one of the biggest use cases of blockchain that most people have not realized that you move away from siloed companies applications to a joint ledger where everybody operates upon. That's a huge mindset shift that companies need to do that actually you collaborate and you not actually compete with others. Uh, and the last one is basically there's um, a less or reduced counterparty risk with blockchain. Mm -hmm. Um, if I would be the sole counterparty and my company would go bust, all these people would may lose these precious assets. And in a blockchain where decentralized ownership is recorded, you have a lot more security that actually people will recognize your ownerships. <coughs> so what's key in this one here is basically that we create not only ownership or represent the ownership, but we create co-ownerships. So people will co-own that car, for example, 10 people or people will call on other assets. Um, the platform mechanics are basically, we have customers on the one side who actually dream about owning a very valuable asset, like a vineyard or a precious Stradivari music instrument. Um, and on the other side, you have these people who have these objects, and trust me, all the rich people have a huge problem. They don't have money, liquidity. They have all their assets in illiquid assets. We have the same yes. <laughs> so, so, so basically, they need it, and we are the marketplace. And what we have um, on our platform, and that's pretty unique. So we not only represent the asset as a token, but also the experience that you get with it. So, if you call on a car, of course you can drive it, and we govern the driving experience and the access to it through that token. Um, if you have an art piece and you cone it with others, we govern how many days you have the art piece in your home, for example. Um, so it's always a combination of asset token and experience token on our platform, which people get. Um, and we do the governance on top of that. Now, what type of assets we do have on the platform that you can imagine? I spoke about a luxury car like a Porsche Speedster, like James Dean was driving before he died. That car we have actually that was previously uh, with Apple, so you know that Mr. Chief Stops was driving that car. And you can get it on a platform, it's 10 co-owners. <coughs> so instead of half a million, you can get access with 50,000 to own that car, but also to drive it for some times. Um, what we have is um, vineyards, so in Italy, 20 people can co-own a vineyard, and what you get is, 36 bottles with your private name delivered at home. So if you have indeed even a guest, you're gonna serve wine from your own wine yard with your name on it. And you can go in summer to have a cocktail party at the vineyard or help harvesting in, in autumn for, um, for the grapes. And of course you get dividends out of these sales that the vineyard actually is producing. Um, we have art, like a famous collection of a Swiss photograph. It's four art pieces. And what happens is that every six months they rotate between the four co-owners. So if you're an owner, a co-owner of that, every six months you have one of the four art pieces in your living room and it's rotating. Um, we have a boat soon, a um, Petrazzini boat on the lake here. So four co-owners actually can co-own it. You can then use that boat 20 days. You just call, in an hour it's ready on the lake and you just take it and go with it. Um, we do have Villas in uh, Greek Islands, where basically it's the same model like it is today, but it's a luxury villa. Um, different or a number of people can co it and have certain days uh, available in the villa. If not, they can rent it out. We do also some purposeful um, assets on the platform. In our case, it's like saving the bees in Switzerland. So the bees population is reducing, so we do some donations to help actually to make it sustainable. And again, it's, it's all basically a co-ownership scheme where basically you pay a fraction of the investment, but you still have access to a unique experience. And that's our use case because, like I said before, the customer base, the generation we are addressing, are young, ambitious people who are working very hard, very long hours. They typically don't have big houses uh, in the cities like in Jakarta, Sao Paulo, or Hong Kong. 
and they want to be serviced fully digital and they just want to get access to these beautiful things on the planet. So what we do or generally what asset tokenization basically will allow us is a more intelligent access to the most precious assets in the world. Uh, it's, if it becomes available digital, basically it's not hidden in a lot of cellars and in a lot of uh, graveyards in this world or in containers that today's rich people do have these, these assets. Um, as we heard before from Modem, you can actually create also on this size a fully integrated value chain, um, which is very different from today because you have to go to so many providers to actually collect each individual item. And what we do is we bring it all on the blockchain. It's all coordinated and fully processed, which gives a fully integrated value chain, which is fantastic. Um, through the fractionalization, so co-ownerships, actually, you can achieve a much better diversification of your wealth. So if you own 10% of a house, 10% of a vineyard, 10% of a jewelry, 10% of um, uh, a boat, basically your diversification gets a lot better and your wealth is much more protected. And um, that's allowing actually the blockchain to do that very efficiently and at, a, at a high scale. And um, what's also important is then on the asset side, um, there's almost no liquidity today in this kind of uh, asset class. And you create actually new, new sort of liquidity and people could actually keep some of their liquidity or of their asset. So on our platform, somebody who wants to sell a Ferrari, who wants to basically need needs some money, he can keep 30% and just give 70% out actually to new owners. And that's entirely new that is not existing today that you can keep apart and actually let the other participate on that one. So you create new kind of liquidity for an, uh, for an asset class which today is highly illiquid. That's it already, I'm very fast like always. So I'm more for questions and answers and discussion than me presenting far, far too long. Michael.